are going to get a title for this message this morning. It's going to be called this. Can you hear me now? Good. Okay, so if you're going to write this down, it's going to be called, Can you hear me now? Question mark. Good. How many of you remember that old commercial? Who is it? That Sprint or Verizon? Is that Verizon? I heard he jumped to Sprint. What a traitor. Man. Anyways, do you guys remember that commercial where the guy's going around finding service? He's like, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? And then when he finally gets connected, he says, good. So we're going to be talking about the voice of God and the Word of God and how God speaks to each and every single one of us. Did you know, ladies and gentlemen, that God wants to talk to you and is talking to you on a regular, daily basis, whether you know it or not? Whether you feel it or not, whether you hear the voice of God, God's voice is talking to you. And He has a word for you each and every single day. See, I happen to believe that there is nothing more powerful than the word of God. Amen? Come on, get, let's get Pentecostal this morning. <laughs> Help me out. I, I do believe that there is nothing more powerful than the word of God. If there was anything more powerful than the Word of God, then God wouldn't be God. It would disqualify God. God's Word is the most powerful thing there is. There ever was and there ever will be for that fact. Let's go to the Bible. Open John 1. If y'all lazy, we got it on the screen this morning. Thank you, media team. We love you. John 1, 1. What does it say? It says, in the beginning was what? And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So notice, this is crazy. In the beginning was what? The Word. Now, that word translation, it's talking about the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But we're talking about the Word today, so we're going to kind of bite off of that a little bit. But did you know God created everything by what? Speaking, not doing. It's true. God created everything that you see around you first by speaking. He created it by his word. He didn't even have to do anything. Why? The Bible proves it in Genesis. He said, let there be light. And he saw that it was good. He just spoke it into existence. So that's how important the word of God is. It's so powerful that God created literally and physically everything around us that you see. So don't you think... It's on us to hear what God's word is for us, not this morning, but on a regular, every single day basis. Amen. Now, God can speak to you and me through many ways and many forms. Now, when I say God, I'm just going to put this out there. Sometimes you feel the Holy Spirit say something to you. Sometimes, and we're going to talk about Paul here in the Bible where Jesus literally spoke to him. That was trippy and it was crazy, and that's very rare. But when I say God speaks to you through many avenues, it could be God, it could be the Holy Spirit, it could even be Jesus, okay? He speaks to us through dreams and visions, and we'll get into all that stuff a little later. But when I say God, think, don't just think God the Father. Whoa, Van, I have a word for you today. When was the last time you heard that, Van? <laughs> He's shaking his head. So that doesn't happen that often, but it can happen. That's not to say that it can't happen. Amen? It can happen. And every single one of us can receive a word from God. Now, very rarely, it's an, it's an audible word where God actually speaks to us and we can hear his voice. Open to Acts chapter 9, and this is the story. You guys know it's a famous story of, of Paul. He used to be Saul, but it's a story of his conversion. And we're going to read um, chapter 9, verses 3 through six. And we're going to take off over here. You know what? Let me backtrack, actually. You guys don't have to put this up, but I'm going to backtrack. I think this kind of has importance. Listen to this. Just keep this in mind. At the beginning of the chapter, it says, meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. Keep that in mind. And skip a bunch of those verses and go down to uh, verse 3, where we're going to take off. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? 
Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Isn't that crazy? You know what gets and trips me up about that verse and that set of scriptures is at the very beginning of the chapter, it says, meanwhile, Saul was still breathing murderous threats to God's people. What did Jesus do? He showed up in his life, and when he showed up in his life, he changed him. He messed him up a little bit, and Paul became one of the biggest instruments of God's word and his gospel in eternity. Two-thirds of the New Testament is stamped by this man's following of Jesus. Isn't that crazy? God doesn't care if you're breathing murderous threats. Now, he'd rather not have you breathe murderous threats to your neighbor or when you're driving and someone cuts you off. Obviously, duh. But God doesn't really care who you are. He's going to find a way to speak to you. And when he speaks to you, your life is going to be changed. Amen? Amen. So God can speak to us through many different avenues, as we stated. God speak to some people in dreams. In Job, put that up, guys. Job chapter 33, verse 15. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when the deep sleep falls on people as they slumber in their bed. So God could speak to you in a dream. How many of you guys have had dreams where you swear it was God? You just knew it was God. Okay, four of you people dream in this place. Do y'all need prayer for sleeping? We can do that. You guys got to help me out this morning. I know this is the early bird crowd, but you got to show me some life in here. Come on, people. God speaks to us through dreams. God speaks to us through visions. How many of you have had a vision? You, you just knew it was God. All right, six people. We're getting there. God speaks to us easily and most effectively and consistently through the Bible, His Word. Amen? Amen. Duh. In prayer. God speaks to us in prayer. God speaks to us through people. Did you know that? Good or bad. God does not care. He does not discriminate. If he wants to tell you something, he's going to tell you something. He does not care how he's going to get it across to you, but he's going to get it across to you. And that's what I love about God because he's relentless in pursuit. So many times you want to bottle God up into this it, Jesus, this weakling that's got a, carrying a sheep on his shoulder and say, Oh, speak to me, Jesus. Oh, son, you've been, you've been a bad boy. And we, we, we want to we feel his love and his warmth, but he's not a weakling. He, he's a man's man, if you know what I'm saying. He's going to speak the word, and sometimes it's going to mess you up. Sometimes it's going to wreck you a little bit. Sometimes it's going to break you, but sometimes he has to do that in order to make you. Amen? Amen. So he's going to do it. You just have to trust him. Now, God can speak to us through prophets. Prophets are fun. I love prophets. Prophets are very fun if they say the right thing. Some prophets prophesy. Y'all heard this. Some prophets prophesy. Some prophets prophesy. How many of you ever had a prophet prophesy to you? I, I will be honest. I had some prophets prophesy to me before because they kept saying it and they kept saying it and it never came to pass. Now, that's not to say that it can't, but some things are just off base. And the Bible says, test the spirits. And we're going to get to that scripture a little bit later. So I had to really test that spirit, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, God can speak to you and me through kids. How many of you all have kids today? God speaks to me about patience and deliverance on a daily basis. My little, amen, and all the people with kids said, Johnny, my little five-year-old boy, has got a mouth just like his daddy. Oh, Lord. And that, nerve, that, that worries me. The dude is a talker. Holy. Okay. Anyways, but God speaks through us, through kids. To us, through kids. Excuse me. God can speak to us also in situations and circumstances. How many of y'all know? I think a lot of times God speaks to us the most in circumstances, in situations. We get into something we think, why are we here? What are we doing here? Why did this happen? Maybe God wanted it to happen. Maybe you let it happen. Whose fault it is? But God can speak to us through circumstances and situations. Did you know that God can speak to us through animals even? Amen, brother. Amen. Did an animal talk to you lately? Because you said amen real sure. <laughs> that was awesome. I love that. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> let's talk after church. <laughs> it's like, amen. <laughs> Man, you got a crazy dog. 
I don't know what you got, but you got something. Listen, we're going to, do you guys remember the story of Balaam? Who, anyone know who Balaam is? All right, three people know who Balaam is. Okay, anyways, so listen, Balaam had, Balaam kind of was a little bit stubborn, if you know what I'm saying. He was kind of rejecting what God wanted him to do. He wanted to do it his own way. And so he got up on a donkey, and he started to go one way, and then the donkey was really stubborn. Now, I don't know much about donkeys, but I do know that they could be stubborn. And anyway, so he started beating this donkey, and it just wouldn't go. It wouldn't go. It wouldn't go. And finally, Jesus actually spoke up through this donkey and said, why are you beating me? What did I ever do to you? So it's very rare, and I'm saying it happens all the time, but God doesn't matter. He doesn't discriminate. He can use anyone, anything to get to you, even if it's the weirdest, stupidest thing, like a donkey. Like, a donkey? Really, Lord? Okay. But it doesn't matter. And now, I have to say this, because I don't really care. I'm not going to preach next week, so y'all can hate me if you want, but... <laughs> y'all know the King James Version of donkey. It starts with the A, ends with the SS. So listen, if your A blank blank is talking to you, then you got some serious problems, okay? <laughs> Just saying. Half of y'all got that joke. <laughs> Your butt talks to you all the time. <laughs> Jesus. Sweat it out, bro. Just sweat it out. <laughs> I don't know what that meant, but whatever. <laughs> okay, let's get serious now. Let's try. Listen, God sp often speaks to us in secluded places. Amen. God often speaks to us in secluded spots. Sometimes God needs to take us out of the craziness and the busyness in life in order to talk to us. Now, that's not to say that he can't talk to us through the storm, through the chaos, through the busyness, through the commotion, through the chatter and the gossip. He can. He's all powerful. But sometimes it's a lot better when God removes us out of that situation and gets us to a secluded place. In fact, our Savior, Lord Jesus, often, what did he do? He went away from the crowds, the Bible says. Many times we read it in the gospel, it says, and Jesus went away from the crowds to do what? To pray. What do you think he was doing? He was talking with the Father. Amen? He was having fellowship with the Father, direct connection with the Father, because maybe he couldn't do it when everyone was tugging at him and pulling and wanting something from him. Amen? So God often speaks to us in secluded places. Now, another thing that I find it kind of crazy and hard to swallow is that sometimes God tells his people to do crazy things. How many of you have ever felt like God told you to do something really crazy before? Just, just crazy. Like, what, Lord? But I know it's you. All right, three people. Okay, you're feeling me. But listen, God sometimes tells people to do crazy things. Two weeks ago, if you missed it, I'm, I just feel terribly sad for you, but we had a hot summer night, so we had an amazing time of worship and word. And Pastor John, you know, brought to light the story of Abraham and his son. We all know that popular story. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of crazy, guys. I mean, come on. I'm not trying to paint God as this, you know, really weird kind of evil because I believe God is love. There's no darkness in him. He's light. But God told Abraham to kill, to prove his love for him. He said, go kill your son. Go sacrifice your son. That's crazy. If God had told you to sacrifice, those of you that have children here, if God had told you to sacrifice one of your kids, would you do it? Just to prove your love for him? I don't know if I could do it. I mean, I love my kids. They make me mad sometimes, Lord. Everyone knows, but I love my kids. I could not do that. So sometimes God tells him to do crazy things. But in the end, you got to trust him because he's got a plan. Amen? God, another, in all the, not all, but a lot of the crazy stuff, <laughs> you guys, that goes on, is a lot of it is documented in the Old Testament. Amen? Do you remember the prophet Hosea? God told Hosea to go marry a prostitute to illustrate Israel's idolatry towards God. Some of y'all like, sign me up for that, Lord. Come on. No, but you didn't say it. But see, that's kind of weird. Really? Marry a prostitute? Okay. Do you guys remember the story of Job? 
What did God say? Satan came to him, and God said, you know what? You can do whatever you want with him. You just can't kill him. Just don't kill him. But you can do whatever you want. Really, Lord, thank you for looking out for me, Job probably thought. I mean, that's messed up. And you guys read the story of Job. He lost literally everything. But in the end, if you read the story, God was glorified. God was magnified through Job, and it's written in the world for generations upon generations to read. Now, just as God and the Holy Spirit can speak to us in many ways, so can the devil. For real. God can speak to us in many ways, but so can the devil. The devil is one crafty, sneaky son of a gun, for lack of better terms. He don't care, too. Just like God. See, the devil is not original. He can't create anything. He was created. So all he can do is bite off of God. All he can do is copy him and use it for his purpose. Okay? And a lot of times we get in trouble because we're, our judgment, our vision is clouded. We don't know if it's God, if it's the Holy Spirit leading us, or if it's the devil. And so we're going to get into this in a little bit here. We're going to figure out well, how is it that, how do you know when God is talking to you? And how do you know it's not a good voice that's talking to you? Well, in order to distinguish between the two, I believe that in order to know that if it's God or the Holy Spirit or the devil talking to you, you have to know that the Holy Spirit can convict you, but Satan is the one that condemns you, okay? Now, Holy Spirit will convict you, and conviction sucks. I'm just going to say it. Being convicted sucks. <laughs> anyone, had, anyone here been convicted before? There you go. Lots of hands. It sucks. Whether you did it or not, it sucks. And sometimes the Holy Spirit moves on our heart, and He convicts us about something in our life that maybe isn't right, and maybe we haven't given up to God. And it doesn't feel good, but you know it's the Holy Spirit because you know that if you get that out of your life, it's going to be for your better. And so God is a loving Father. He cares too much for your well-being to leave you as you are. He wants to make you as He is, not as you are. Because you are not good enough, but He is. Holy Spirit's voice is never forceful. Amen? That's what I love about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is kind of like a, come on, Andre, I, you know this. It's more of like, a, I want to say it's more like your wife's nudge, but my wife ain't here this morning. Sometimes she doesn't nudge. Sometimes it's more of a punch and a kick. Amen? The married people. But the Holy Spirit kind of nudges you. The devil pressures you. Okay? Satan pressures you. So if you want to know the difference between the two when you're in a crossroads of your life or it may not even have to be as dramatic as a crossroads, when you don't know what to do and where to go, God is going to give you peace. Amen? The Holy Spirit is going to give you peace. Now the other side of it, you might feel pressured, and that's evil. God is never going to pressure you into doing something that is not godly. Um, I thought I came up with this, but I guess I looked it online and it was already there, so I didn't come up with this quote. But I love this quote. It says, the voice of God will never contradict with the word of God. So if you want to know if it's the word of God and it's the voice of God speaking into your life, what does the word of God say? The word of God will always, 100%, 10 out of 10 times, back up the voice of God. If you're in a situation where the two don't match up, then somebody's lying to you. Somebody's lying. Somebody is not telling the truth. And God cannot lie because it's against his nature. He wouldn't be God. Let's open the book of John. Love John. Chapter 10, verses 25 through 27. Let's put that up on the monitor. John 10, 25 through 27. All right. Let's read. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. We're going to talk about sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. So we're going to talk about sheep. 
Now, the Bible refers to Jesus as the good shepherd. And the Bible refers to us, I guess, unfortunately, in our case, as sheep. Can you put a picture of that sheep? Someone said that's cute. Uh, turn to your neighbor say, that's you right there. <laughs> no, for real. Tell them that's you right there. The Bible says so. I ain't lying. Okay, I, I, I'll admit, that's kind of a cute sheep, all right? I found a picture of this, this stupid-looking sheep, but I thought, you know what? Uh, if I offend them, they're not going to want to hear what I'm saying, so... I changed it up a little bit. That's a cute looking sheep, but this is you and me, okay? Metaphorically speaking, spiritually speaking even, this is you and me, and Jesus is the good shepherd. I thought, Lord, out of all the things you could have compared us to, you compare us to sheep, really? Why not something cool and like stealthy and agile and fierce, like a lion or a tiger or a panther or a liger, if they exist? Our unicorn, those aren't real, dude. If you're seeing unicorns, you need deliverance. <laughs> and you want something. Okay, so just some facts about sheep. Did you guys know? I didn't know. But there are over a billion sheep in the world. A billion. And how many people are there in the world? Like what? Okay, I heard eight. Six, okay, let's just say seven, give or take. There's seven, so there's one billion sheep for every seven billion people on the earth. That's a kind of a big ratio. There's a lot of stinking sheep out there. And you can smell it when you live in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Amen? <laughs> South Dakota is actually, in the United States, is actually like the top, in the top five, I think, states of sheep herding, producing, I don't know, shepherding. I don't know what they do with them. Whatever. <laughs> Does anyone have a sheep in here? Because I know we have some farmers up in here. Does anyone have any sheep? For real? No sheep? Guys, we got to get back to our South Dakota roots, man. <laughs> what is this? How come no one has a sheep out here? Second service. Ah, thank you. <laughs> this is, I found, I found this interesting. Check this out. Sheep cannot right themselves from certain positions. Therefore, if you see a sheep on his back, please give him or her some assistance as sheep cannot get themselves upright from this position and if left unaided, they will eventually die within an hour. How stupid is that? Are you kidding me? If the thing falls over, it can die in an hour? Lord, why are we sheep? This, everything you hear on the internet is true, okay? When you read it on Google, it's true. So this is what I'm going off of. It's a joke. But it's a fact about sheep, so it must be true. We got to get a sheep, uh, sheep doctor. <laughs> we need a farmer in here. What's a sheep doctor? A veterinarian. Amen. Listen, in all seriousness, that's how much they depend on their shepherd. A stupid thing can fall over, and it'll die usually in an hour if it doesn't get turned up right. Wow. That's very sad. Sheep, another a third fact, sheep have a knack of huddling together. Wherever one goes, others follow. So, that being said, some sheep do stupid things. So when one sheep sees another sheep doing a stupid thing, guess what's going to happen? A lot of times, that other sheep will join in the stupidity that the other sheep are performing, and they just do it all together and have a jolly good old time. That is like you and me sometimes, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking to somebody here. Sometimes we do stupid things. And when we see someone doing stupid things, it looks fun, so we join in. And then we feel the consequences of it later, amen? God, help us. Lead us, Lord. Forrest Gump said, stupid is as stupid does. Amen? That's why we need a shepherd. Now check this out. Check this out. This, this one was my favorite. I thought this one was so cool. Sheep have an excellent, sheep have excellent hearing, but poor vision. Sheep have great hearing. We just read those verses. See, God knows what he's talking about when he designed sheep. They have excellent hearing, but they have poor vision. 
They might not see where they're going to go or where they should go, but they have a good shepherd to lead them all the time, any day, every day. And when they get in trouble, he snatches them out of the jaws of death. Shepherds, I guess, they carry these staffs or rods. I don't know what they're called, but they have that, you know, hooky thing on the end. I always wondered what that was for. I thought it was just to look cool and hang out like you're, you know, climbing mountains. But I guess what they do, they, that hook in the end, they snatch sheep. If they're doing something stupid or if they're getting in trouble, they grab them for the sole purpose of just snatching them out and getting them back to the herd. And God and in his infinite love and relentless per, 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 pursuit of us actually would leave, the Bible says, 99 to go find that one, to go save and rescue that one. Thank God. Thank Jesus, the good shepherd, for his love for us. Excellent hearing, but poor vision. See, a good sheep knows his shepherd's voice. Do you know the voice of the Father? How close, how in tune are you with the voice of the Father that you know his voice? Because you know there's voices speaking to you all the time on a regular basis. But do you know which voice to follow? See, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. If sheep rely so much on the shepherd for their well-being, guidance, and protection, then how much more do we rely on the good shepherd? Now, let's go back into the, the message a little bit. God might tell you to do something uncomfortable, but never ungodly, okay? It might be uncomfortable, but it would never be ungodly because that would go against his nature. Do you guys remember the story? I mean, if you went to Sunday school, hey, even if you didn't went to Sunday school, you know the story of Jonah. And God had sent him, pretty much he had sent him on a mission to the city called Nineveh, and basically he told him to just to preach hellfire. <laughs> His message to them was, y'all are sinners, y'all gonna die, heathens, repent, because if you don't, you will die. That is uncomfortable. That is an uncomfortable message. What if God told you to do that and go to a city and start jumping on the, the, the rooftops and the street corners and preaching this message of really like hellfire, like I just said? How many of you would be like, Lord, sign me up. I'm going right now. Not many, because that's weird. And it's uncomfortable. But God had a purpose for it. Through all of the craziness, God had a purpose for it. And, well, y'all know Jonah. He resisted God. <laughs> so what happened? The Lord said, fine, you don't want to do it your, my way? Or you don't want to do it uh, my way, you'll do it your way. So he got in the belly of a fish. And then God spoke to him. See, sometimes that's a perfect example of God taking you out of a certain situation in order for him to speak to you. The guy had to be swallowed up by a fish, a whale, I don't know, whatever is out there, in order for God to speak to him. And then after that, probably three days and three nights that he was in there, um, he's probably like, you know what, Lord, I think I get your point. Get me out of here. I'm going to go. And so God released him. Amen. So it doesn't matter. He's going to use whatever avenue he can, and he needs to, to get to you, whether you like it or not. See, sometimes God allows things in our life to get our attention, and then he speaks to us. Notice, I said allows. But he allows things in our life to get our attention. Uh, when I was, uh, I'll just share this story real quick. When I was about, well, it wasn't about, on my 18th birthday, um, I was just a, you know, a young buck, really prideful and cocky and arrogant, and I thought I knew it all, and, you know, I kind of grew up in the church. My family was, you know, always involved in ministry, but, you know, I, I was, I was not that serious about God. I mean, I was following him. I was singing and playing music on the team and all that stuff, but, you know, my head, my heart was elsewhere. Just the young, normal guy. So on my 18th birthday, um, we got out of school early. I was a senior, I remember. Um, my cousin had a motorcycle that wasn't even finished. It was one of those crotch rockets, you know, the real fast ones. I know some of y'all got them in here, but, man, those things are of the devil now that I see. <laughs> but, anyways, we all decided to, I, some of them skipped school. I'm pretty sure they weren't supposed to be there. But we all decided to go hang out at his house, and, you know, he got this. He was the only one in our crew that got a bike, and so we were hanging out, and we were all taking turns driving it. And that wasn't even fixed all the way. 
I got my turn on the bike. It's the 18th birthday. I remember I was wearing jeans. I was wearing um, um, a white Hollister shirt, and that was it. I didn't have no helmet, no nothing, no body armor, whatever it is the bikers wear these days. But it was my turn to get on the bike, so I get up on the bike, and this was the second time in my life that I had been on a motorcycle. So I kind of knew how to ride a motorcycle, but I kind of didn't, just say. Anyways, um, I basically, I'm not, just, I'm not trying to brag about this, because now I think it's stupid, and if you did that, I'll be mad at you, so don't do this, but I like got up to 111 on Madison Street over there on the northeast side of town. No helmet, no nothing. I got up to 111. I just decided to push myself to see how fast I can get this thing. So stupid. And thank God I didn't wipe out then. I actually wiped out when I was going really slow and I was two blocks from the house. <laughs> so stupid, I know. Like, if you're going to wipe out, make it cool, right? No, not me. I make it dumb and embarrassing. So um, we, I was driving, you know, after I went to 11, my blood was all rushing. My heart's <laughs> feel adrenaline, feel real good. And then I get down like two blocks from the street. You know, I'm downshifting and stuff. If y'all know about motorcycles, you know, I was just downshifting the gears and stuff. And then the clutch was really sticky on that thing because it wasn't fixed. Anyway, so I, I was in gear and, and I, um, I, had, I had the gas. I was pushing the throttle and the clutch stuck. So it immediately spooled up the engine on that thing and just <laughs> made a loud noise. I panicked. I let go of the clutch like this. And you know what happens when you let go of a clutch? Your tires spin. So I wiped out. I was going about 30 miles an hour, and I wiped out. I laid over on that side. Um, I scratched my whole elbow. You can kind of see there's some tiny little, puny little scars there from 18. This is from the bike. Um, and my whole left side was scabbed up. My whole back was scabbed. I actually dinged my head. I used my elbow to not, you know, hit the ground because I wasn't a helmet. I dinged my head, and I had this patch, one-inch patch of hair lost. It just scraped the asphalt. My friends called me Patch after that. I hated that. <laughs> Stupid nickname. Like, can you call me something cool, man? These are battle scars, dude. But anyways, it's so dumb. But thank God, I could have busted my head open. And I had this little scratch. I thought about getting stitches. But anyways, I got up. You know, I laid the bike over. And the bike just went flying, hit the curb. It was like one of those T intersections. I got up. Adrenaline is running. My blood's gushing down my head. So, the, you know, the, the bike is busted. The guys, it was too like two blocks down, they grab it, and, and I go home, and, and um, yeah, needless to say, my mom and dad were not thrilled. They were really, really mad at me that I would do something so stupid, and I knew better, and it was on my 18th birthday, I don't know why, and we had a conference, actually, our, our band got invited in um, Sioux City or something like that, we had a conference, Eli, was that Sioux City? Man, you remember, come on, yeah, you do, help me out, man, it was in Sioux City, let's just say, and and I was supposed to, I was a drummer back then, so I, I needed to play. And so I let the team down. I felt like I let my parents down. I felt like I let everybody down. But I'm going to tell you something right here, right now. Oh, Lord, did I spend some time with Jesus those next three days. I was just bedridden. I was literally scabbed up. I was just laying there and thinking about what I've done. You know, when you mess up, you feel like crap. It is not a good feeling. Everyone was out of town. I, my parents had gone out of town for something, and I was all by myself in my room in the house. Oh, I was crying. I'll be honest. I was weeping for the Lord. I was, I was praying like I never prayed before, and I just broke down. I just felt like I broke down, but then God spoke to me. He said, you know what? You're, you're going so crazy, and you're forgetting about me. Maybe this was okay. Maybe this is, I don't know, I happen to think to this day that maybe I needed that to kind of slow me down a little bit. But God ministered to me. He spoke to me so much through those three days when I was in bed. I was reading the Word like never before. Isn't it funny how a bad accident can make you get in the Word sometimes? And it's kind of sad, but you know what? We're just stupid sheep sometimes. We do stupid things, sheepy things. And God in His love and mercy for us, He pulls us out and He speaks to us. So I'm thankful for for that, but that's what it took, and it was such an uncomfortable time, but after then, I just want to say, after that point in my life, I really got serious about Jesus, and I, I got kind of, I kind of rededicated my life to Him, and I, I got serious about following the Lord, and from ever since, here I am now, so I thanked God for His grace in my life. Listen, just because you can't hear God it doesn't mean that he's not speaking to you. 
Just because you can't hear him, it does not mean that he's speaking to you. I saw this too online, so it must be true, but I thought it was cool. It said that it's like talking to God is like talking to a friend on the telephone. You can't see him, but you know he's on the other line. Amen? So just because you can't hear him doesn't mean that he isn't there. And don't panic when you can't hear the voice of God. Guys, there's so much junk and there's so much distractions that every day affect us. And sometimes it's hard. I know it's hard to hear God's voice and the Holy Spirit leading us. But when you can't hear it, don't panic. Don't freak out. I hate to use this cliche because I hate cliches, but I have to say it because it's so good and so perfect. But Pastor John said this two weeks ago. He said, the teacher stays silent during a test. The teacher is never talking during the test. Well, I hated that about school. <laughs> but listen, don't panic when you can't hear the voice of God. Jesus, the Son of God, at one point was on the cross. What did he do? He cried out. He said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Even Jesus felt forsaken. Even he felt like he was all alone and left abandoned. Was God not there? Oh, he was there. But God wanted to see it through the end. Amen. So when you're going through some crap, when you're going through some difficulty, when you're going through a trying, hard time, stay the course. I just want to encourage you today. Stay the course. Don't give up. He is there. You might not feel him. You might not see him, but you know he's there because he's a loving father and he's never going to let you down. Amen. Religion says you have to be perfect. Religion says that only God can speak to you in church. That is a lie from the devil. God can speak to you anywhere. God will actually speak to you whenever, wherever, through whomever. All you have to do is listen. Real talk. My sheep know my voice. Amen. And you know something, guys? I got another real story, man. I got stories today. I love talking to God on a daily basis. I get up, I pray. I, I, I'm in a tree business, so sometimes I'm 60 feet up in the air. You know what I'm doing a lot? I'm talking to God. I say, Lord, this is awesome up here. Look at all those ants down there. This is great. But, uh, hey, don't play me off yet. I ain't done. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> okay, fine. You can play me off. Just make it real emotional. Eli's my sidekick. <laughs> hey, you better do this second service. This is awesome. I love this. Anyways, just I'll just be fast, but I feel like you, you got to get this. I love talking to God on a, a regular basis, and um, we didn't talk much about uh, this in the last seed series, like seed series, but I want to talk about the seed of faith, okay? Now, um, a while ago in my business, um, I kind of go by month by month, so, you know, I track my bottom line. I, I, I go month by month to see how I do month. That's how I evaluate my business. And um, towards the end of one of our months, uh, I had a big equipment failure. One of my chippers, like the main thing that you need to do pretty much to run the business, like blew up. And so I kind of finished the month off, you know, just limping. And it was okay. It was a decent month. And thing is, it was busted. I didn't know how much it was going to cost. If you know anything about heavy machinery, it sucks. It's thinking expensive. And so I felt like just in turmoil. I, I know I finished the month off, but I felt in turmoil. But then I felt like God was speaking to me. And I, I know this is Holy Spirit because this is, it's an amazing thing that came out of it. But he said, you can't give up like this, man. I know it looks like it's tough. And I know it looks like you don't know how you're going to get through because I'm the only provider in my family. You know, um, I, I got to make it. I can't have an off day. I can't have an off week. And the, we didn't have the parts for it. They had to go to London to get parts, something stupid like that. Like, I'm not, we're not going to get parts from London. And it was an arm and a leg. I ain't lying. And so God just said through that whole time, he said, you know what? You got to just trust me. Do you trust me? I said, fine. Okay, Lord, I trust you. And I remember I was sitting, I was wearing jeans and a white shirt. Something with jeans and a white shirt when God speaks to me. I don't know what it is. For real. I was missing that stupid little Hollister thingy. But anyways, um, I was sitting in my truck at, you know, at my, my lot. And I was sitting thinking... He said, trust me, trust me. I'm like, okay, fine, Lord, I trust you. I'm going to make a declaration of faith. I said, Lord, this month, even though my stuff is broken, even though I don't know how I'm going to fix it, I don't know how long it's going to take. They said it a week. This was a week after a week into my stuff being broken. This was already a week had passed. I just finished out the month that started. I said, Lord, I'm, I'm going to have faith. I believe that I'm going to still even make the same amount of money that I made last month. 
even though I don't know what's going to happen, my stuff is broken. So I'm like, yeah. And then God spoke to me. He said, that isn't faith. He said, I know you can do that, but that isn't faith. Challenge yourself to do more. I think you can do more. And so I said, okay, Lord. Fine. And I made a declaration of faith. I say, Father, I'm going to blow last month's record out of the water. I don't know how, but you do. Amen. And so from then on, I'm not going to get into details because it's my business and it ain't your business. <laughs> but I'm just going to say I had one of the best months. While my stuff was broken, I had one of the best months yet. God is my provider. He will provide. With all that being said, as we've established that there are many voices pulling and tugging at our lives, be careful who you let speak into your life. I talked about this the last time I preached, but it's very important who you let in to your life. What are you hearing? Where are you getting it from? What is the source? Remember, you can put that up on the screen, guys. Proverbs 18.21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. So make sure you put yourself around people who are speaking life into you who are growing you, who are encouraging you, who are lifting you up and not always putting you down. There's enough of that going on in this world. But be careful. Some people want to look like they're helping you, but they're really hurting you. Because remember, and you can put that scripture up, we mentioned earlier, 1 John chapter 4, it says, test the spirits to see if they are from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So be careful. When someone speaks into your life, choose wisely. Don't just let anyone and everyone speak everything into your life because a lot of it's garbage. And you know when it's God, when you know when it's the Holy Spirit. It's beautiful young single ladies, I'm going to preach to you this morning. If you're out there and you know what? Speaking of beautiful young ladies. We have a brand new married couple with us this morning. Lenora and Stefan, what's up? Come on, give them a hand. Man, y'all are devoted. You even made it to church like two days after you got married. That is what's up. We love you guys. How's married life? It's good so far. The struggle is real. Amen. You'll, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Anyways, listen. I, I just have to say this because I've seen this in my life a few times and I thought it was so funny. But young ladies out there, be very, very, very careful when a guy comes up to you and says, oh, God told me to marry you. Now, that's not to say that God can't do that. Maybe there's people here today where, you know, God told you audibly or not audibly to marry someone. And that's okay. I felt like God told me to marry my wife, but it wasn't like, hey, Andre, see that hottie over there? She's yours. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> it wasn't like that. But I just knew that I knew that I knew. Some of my singles friends said, how do you know? How do you know? Well, you just know that you know that you know. I don't know how you know, but you know. Okay? But you just do. And that was the Holy Spirit. And I knew and everything is great. But listen, be careful when a guy says that, oh, God told me to marry you. That's, <laughs> a lot of times that's prophet lying. That's not prophesying. I've seen many bad situations happen when, when, when people get spiritual on you. Just be careful. That's why John says, test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because there's a lot of false prophets out in this world. Turn to your neighbor and say, God told me to sit by you today. Did you guys get that? 